Hello everyone. My name is Amber and uh I am a dragon. As a dragon, uh I've been wanting to play this game I got some time ago. It's been sitting in my backlog for a long time. Yeah, I've been wanting to check this out. Uh it's about it's about being a dragon. And uh, I was really curious about it, and uh, yeah, I really wanted to play it. Now, my big old head is covering up here the menu options here, so I think I will just go ahead and quickly move myself over to the right side. Okay. Now if I can just uh, flip myself horizontally, there we go. Nice. Okay, back to the game. Let's, I, I always check out settings, the settings in the game first. First of all, I'm gonna pause the recording here and see if the music isn't too loud. Yeah, the music was a little loud. Skip chase scenes. Huh. I wonder what, why that is an option. I... okay. Uh... So yeah, this game is called Golden Treasure, the Great Green. And it looks pretty nice. Uh... okay. Let's start the game. Shall we? A box without hinges, key or lid, yet a lot golden treasure inside is hid. What is it? You are alone in the chamber. There is one wall, which surrounds you utterly, in every direction and on every side. The wall is made of love. And it embraces you. Its inherent goodness is an obvious and complete truth. Hang on, I'm covering the text with my big old head. Where do I go? There's nowhere for me to go. I guess I can shrink a little. <laughs> How's this? I don't know if I'm even visible anymore, whatever. Okay, I think this is good. I'm tiny! Okay, back to the game. There is a rhythm in the chamber. A beat and a flow, which has always been. It is the only way you can tell between sleeping and waking. When awake, you can feel the rhythm. And when asleep, you cannot. Which time do you enjoy most? I think I I would rather enjoy being awake. Even now, in the beginning, you reach towards change, toward the future. The from of the rhythm promises everything to you and will soon blossom into reality. You have gained a large amount of air mastery. Then, after a time, you hear the voice. At first, you did not know that there was a voice, only a strange sensation unfolding in your mind. A soothing warmth, pulses of orange color, and the comfort com comforting scent <laughs> sorry, comforting taste of brimstone on your tongue. And yet, you are alone here in the chamber. Could there be something outside? You reach out, form forming a colored echo in your thoughts and sending it beyond your reality. And you are rewarded with an explosion of purest joy 
ringing through your essence and echoing through your mind. In time, you learn the differences between the emotions, the colors of the mind that the voice outside the wall would pour into you through its mind song and which you would pour back. And so you discover happiness and sadness, anger and calm, fear and curiosity, and an innumerable spectrum of others. And then the images come, pictures etched in neon relief in your mind by the song of the voice. They are images of amazing beings, of stately tree, an honorable, reliable stone, of chattering stream and murmuring sea, and of the great giver, who is also called sun, and of the great birther, who receives from sun and gives birth to all things, who is also called earth. Earth and sun are the greatest of beasts, mightiest of all the animals, but next to them in might are your people, the true children of above and below, the kin unto each other, who are also called drag. The voice then ask you, asks you a question, O oh, tiny kin yet to be, which shall you become? Sun, the radiant one, the great giver, who rules and slays, and is slain and reborn each day? Or Earth, who circle dances to sun's music, who nurtures, peaceful and omnipotent, births all good beasts, knows all silent secrets, and abides forever? For me is the power and the glory, and the rise and the fall both. I wish to be sun. For me is the knowing and the healing and the dance of the circle. I wish to be earth. The one that aligns most with like, uh, what is important to me, and what I feel, is the moon think wait <laughs> the earth sorry not the moon how did I get those two confused so here we go I wish to be earth the voice responds by singing a vision and feeling of cool damp earth pregnant with green life into you I love the feeling of cool damp earth. On this path lies a power, hidden but great. May you find a deeper peace amidst the violence of existence. God, I love the writing in this game already. You have gained a large amount of earth mastery. Time has little, little meaning in the chamber, marked only by the rhythm within you. The wall also seems to embrace you just a little more closely with each moment. The voice from outside leaves and returns again and again, continuing to instruct you gently and at a slow pace, ensuring that you can receive its song and build yourself around it. It teaches you of the many good beasts, those of fur and scale and feather and fin. Some are swift, like the hopping long ear, and some are powerful, like the horned grazers, but all are good and all have their own music. Most importantly, it teaches you the two great laws. 
first that you are a destroyer. To live is good, and you may only preserve your life by tearing away the life of others. You must destroy. Find that which calls you to, which calls to you, and destroy it, and take it onto your into yourself, and grow mighty. If you fail to destroy, you will waste away, and be yourself destroyed, and all your music will become silence. Second. That you are a creator. All creators are one of two kinds: givers, who give of their essence during the dance of creation, or birthers, who receive their essence and weave new life from it, bringing it forth in the fullness of time. Hmm. Don't really get the difference yet. But I'm sure we'll find out. When you have grown great, you must seek out another who is also great, and of opposite nature, and through the dance of creation, become a source of the future. Okay. If you fail in this. The destiny of the children. Of, if you fail this, the destiny of the children of heaven and earth will waste away, and where there might have been the echo of your music in the time beyond yourself, there will only be silence. So it is, was, and shall be. There is a brief silence. During which, hello, during which you sense that there is space enough for one question. What do you do? Hmm. Okay. Here, here are the questions. I ask how best to consume the essence of others. <laughs> okay. I ask if the voice is my creator. Was it one of the two whose dance created me? I ask how to do the dance of creation. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I think it's a little early for me to know about how to do the dance of creation. You know. <laughs> I ask whether it is possible to live without destroying others. This is an interesting option. Hmm. Or you can ask no questions. I think I'm going to choose one of these questions, but <laughs> uh, I think I'll go with this one. I ask if the voice is my creator. Are you my mom? Oh, indeed. Uh, Indeed, affirms the voice, and you can tell that the spring-colored memory of the tender and violent dance, which created you, lives still in its mind. I am a source of your being, and so you must and shall walk in my ways. My truths are inscribed upon your essence. And you, in your turn, shall pass yours onto others, but only if you are strong and worthy. Okay, air, earth, and water. That's an interesting combo. Beyond the two great laws, sings the voice, there is one lesser law. It is not great. If you violate it, you shall not be destroyed. Nevertheless, taste this truth, and chain it within your mind. You must seek treasure. Treasure.
treasure comes in many kinds, but you will know it when you find it. Treasure is something rare, and of worth to all of the true children of heaven and earth. By taking treasure as your own, you shall prove your greatness to other kin. Whether obtained by strength of body or of mind, or any other thing, it matters not. All that matters is that you must gather all treasures to yourself. Some are obvious, but well guarded, and some require little strength. Little strength, strength, okay, but are difficult to find. None, though, are both obvious and easily obtained, or they would not be treasure. If I do not need it to survive, why must I seek treasure? What is the greatest treasure? Are all treasures such as can be smelled and touched and seen? <laughs> Will you give me a treasure, great voice? Okay, and silence again. Okay, the blue one is an interesting question. I think I'll go with that one. Are all treasures such as can be smelled and touched and seen? No. Why, while all can value that which is rare and beautiful and can be sensed, some few count other things among the treasures, things such as rare truths and ways of being, or knowledge of true songs which destroy and create in strange ways. But not all can agree as to their worth. If you can, you must seek to build a golden trove. A vast gathering of glittering treasure, which none could deny. Hunt not the unknown. That path is thus sure. However, you sense that there are indeed things less known, which some may find to be very, very great treasure. Okay. The voice's song grows softer. Now I leave you, my kin and my creation. You may never hear my song again, nor I yours. I have imparted the two great laws, as is my duty. You are a destroyer. And you are a creator, and these truths are woven into you like warmth into blessed flame. If you cease to be a destroyer or a creator, you would no longer be kin. And you know of the lesser law, the seeking and taking of treasure. Though you may survive and be well fed and strong of body, if you have no treasure, you will never be called great among the kin. You will never know the pleasure of the dance of creation, and your creator self will languish in a frigid void. <laughs> if you have no treasure, you will get no bitches. Okay, good to know. All other laws are false. These alone bind us. Remember that you are Drakkin. All other beings of this world must stand in the shadow of your beautiful and terrible music. The rhythm which you would which you feel now flowing through you is the rhythm of life to have the rhythm within you is to be alive to be silent without the rhythm is the perfect sign of death 
Nature shall now be your guide, companion and opponent, your friend, enemy, and always, always your teacher. There is no being born of earth, the great birther, and sun, the great giver, greater than you. The music of our people is great. Rejoice, knowing that your essence has been woven to such a body, and that such a fate is yours. When you at last escape from the wall which I have put around you, both to keep you safe and to test you, then you will be worthy to begin the great adventure which some call life. And with that final message, the idea of yourself exploding from potentiality into reality, the voice fades and is gone. You know that it will not return. How do you feel in that moment? Relieved to be alone again? Excited to begin the mysterious journey ahead? Abandoned by my creator? Admiration from, for my creator? Nothing. I'm excited! Yay! You are eager to show the world how great you are. How much greater you shall become. You dance a tiny, tiny dance within the confines of the chamber and sing raw, pure songs of hope and longing into the nothingness beyond the wall. Fire! I think it's because of that enth enthusiasm. For a while, <laughs> for a time, you are left alone with the, within the chamber. You feel the measured beating of your own rhythm within you and drift in and out of consciousness. The wall seems to have gotten smaller, hugging you tightly indeed. Your rhythm has swelled into mighty chords and your breath is fierce against your legs. Suddenly and without warning, the voice returns. It is not a measured song rife with ordered sigils as last time, but a lurid gash of feelings and ideas suddenly thrust upon you. Beware the other seed, the no tails, the flat faces, beware the ter their terrible music, beware the seed of the others, beware. And suddenly there is an awful silence. A space left behind where something should have been. No other voices enter your mind. A few times you think you may be receiving a song, but it always proves to be simply yourself, echoing tiny hopes, fears and dreams. Meanwhile, the wall the wall, which is made of love, and which has always, always embraced you, is squeezing you very tightly. Its love, once so pure and benign, has become toxic. You are pressed so mercilessly you can barely breathe, and to make matters worse, you feel a horrible emptiness, a draining within your core. You must do something. Yeah, let's get born! It loves you, you know. But it must now be broken. You push and struggle, struggle, feeling your body move this way, then that. 
but the wall thwarts your every move on every side. It is not through pushing, but rather through unfolding your whole self, limb by limb and muscle by muscle, that you at last achieve the first true success in the music of your life. You hear, not with your mind, but with your ears, your actual ears, the cracking and crunching of the wall as it breaks slowly apart and then see with your own eyes your first vision of true light. <clears throat> Hello world! I am ready to go out and kill! Part 1 Happy those early days When on some gilded cloud or flower My gazing soul would dwell an hour And in those weaker glories spy Some shadows of eternity Sorry, need to, need, need, I need to drink a lot of water You are somewhere inside the body of Earth, the great birther. Her semi-soft semi flesh is veined, in, veined here and there with the grasping roots of trees or blockaded by stones who stare blindly at you. The air here tastes of comfort and slumber and your own body feels as though it is in good condition. But you feel a burning in your core. You know that it is the destroyer within, eager for substance to fuel your being. If you fail to find anything to destroy, the emptiness will overtake you and your life will be lost. You sense nothing to consume here, though. A few illuminating rays tumble in from above, but your vision is still dim and unsteady. Perhaps you could leave this place by crawling up the tangle of roots overhead. Whenever you consider a task which, which your will alone cannot conquer, you will get a sense of whether you will succeed or, or fail Based on your elemental attributes, climbing, climbing up the roots would require a certain amount of fluidity and flexibility, which are the domain of the water element. Good thing I have some of that. Red indicates that you cannot succeed, at least not without problems in your current state, while green indicates your feeling that you certainly can. Yellow means that it is too close to be sure. As you make choices, your health and energy may be affected as well. Success brings benefits, but be not too afraid of failure through it. All beings learn and grow strong, while success has little to teach. Now choose, newborn. What will you do? Hmm, okay. Well, there is no colors yet. Oh, okay. It's... Okay, it's red. This one is yellow, I think. Okay. <laughs> okay, go deeper. You can go deeper if you want. Uh... Hmm. Okay, that's fire. We have some water. You know, it's red. But I will try it. I'm gonna take a risk. Let's go! The labyrinth of roots foils your progress. You are not small, quick, and flexible enough to clamber up and through them. 
And your efforts are, are fruitless. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> this doesn't require anything. And this requires some fire. Uh, let's see the eggshells. The chamber of cre your creation seems so small now. This seems so small now. Moments ago, it was your entire reality. Perhaps there is another reality beyond this one. You now see into which you will one day hatch. Have you any further business with the wall? It does not smell attractive. <laughs> uh huh. Should we eat the eggshells? Let's eat them. They have calcium or something. The wall crunches and crackles presently in your mouth as you consume it, but it lashes your throat as it is, as it, as it is drawn down to your core, causing you to cry out in discomfort. It also does not seem to do anything for your hunger. Okay. Mm-hmm. We can try this, but I don't see if we can... There's no yellow or green or red indication. So we don't know if that's gonna succeed. Uh, I'm gonna try it. Your small but powerful limbs tear through Earth's flesh. It is an effort, but you succeed in crafting a small rough tunnel, large enough to fit your body through. More light spills on into the burrow as you emerge out of the ground, shaking your body clean. We have lost a little energy. Yay, we're out! This space is much larger than the last, and though you are still sheltered by Earth's body, light is more plentiful here. You may be approaching her skin. A clean azure flavor slides across your, your tongue. Water, the comforter and supporter of all life, is here, gathered into a still body before you. Something within you resonates with it, drawing you towards it. What is your will? <laughs> I could use a drink. I think I could use a drink. Let's go. You move closer. Wow, I'm so tiny and colorful. And for the first time, you see yourself. Your body, sculpted and painted by time and space, is almost beyond description. Your armor shines subtly with Earth's rich hues, like the promise of precious things buried deep. Sorry, water time. Your feathers, each one dyed with more colors than you know the names of, long for the touch of air, and you are crowned with flumes, with <laughs> with plumes, so that all other good beasts may know your sov sovereignty. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that word. I know what it means, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Your long neck, graceful limbs, and supple tail transform every motion into a weaving cascade of flowing movement. Seeing your true form for the first time, you feel... Mm, proud! I'm a dragon, hell yeah! All of the four elements of reality sing out through your form. You are nothing short of gorgeous. Every part of you the pinnacle of the possibilities of being, as channeled through the gauntlet, gauntlet of time. You are of the kin, 
the children of above and below, and you feel a deep and shameless love for everything you are. This, indeed, is the perfect and ultimate body into which your essence has been woven. These are the limbs with which you will walk the paths of this life, the teeth and claws with which you will mete out the judgment of destruction upon other beings. This is the fruit of your creators, and this is the body whose legacy may be bequeathed to others if you survive long enough and are found worthy. This is yourself, worthy of respect, admiration, and every success. Yeah, I'm gonna drink some water. Water is important. You lower your mouth to the body of water and use your tongue to take some of it into you. It flows pleasantly down, trickling to your core, relieving you of a little of the emptiness within and soothing your essence. You have gained a little energy. What is reputation as a friend to all life is apparently well deserved. Your core demands something which water alone cannot slake, though. I've never heard of that word, slake. I'm gonna look it up later. With nothing else to do within this space, you follow the whispering air and light outward. Whoa! What a view! Now that you have emerged from the Great Mother's flesh, you can see her more completely, and her power and beauty are beyond your wildest hope. The trees are her feathers, and the mountains her spine. Her breath is the wind, and her essence flows in streams, rivers, and the distant sea. Above you, Sun, the great giver, shines his own endless essence down upon earth. He blazes above you, mighty in his glory, beautiful and shameless in his circle dance of creation, by which all that carries the rhythm of life is ultimately begotten. The air between them is sweet with life and light, the fruits of their union. The wind blows, teasing your wings, a wild desire to tread the air, to rise above, fills you. What will you do? Ahaha, uh -huh, no hints. Okay, no hints here. I want to fly. I, I want to fly, but will I die? Hmm. I just... I was bored five minutes ago! How am I supposed to know if I can fly? Let's try it. Whatever. You spread your wings and leap fiercely from the heights, knowing that Earth cannot hold your drakkin greatness. For a single beautiful moment, you hang in the air, and then... Oh boy, let's see what happens. Ha <laughs> ha Oh fuck. Well, it's been a good life, guys. Earth, Earth rushes swiftly at you. Frantic flailing of your limbs does nothing. You tumble to the ground, crashing through treetops, then limbs, then bushes, then bushes, then the cruel, unforgiving ground. Oh, the fool! It is fitting that a kin's reach should exceed the grasp. Failure is a far, far better teacher than success. This grants you a tiny bonus to all four elements. 
I survived? Did I survive? Body- Yeah! I didn't die! Hooray! Hooray for stupid foolish decisions! Body ringing with pain, you slowly recover from nature's rebuke. Apparently, you are not yet worthy of treading the boundless paths of the above. You sense that you have much growing and learning to do before you can realize your dream of a few moments ago. Your miserably failed attempt at flight seems to have been witnessed by a small winged beast, a lesser child of earth and sun. It stands out against its surroundings in bold black and white. It laughs at you, insulting you with a mocking song. The mighty dragon once ruled over the earth. Now I have seen earth rules the race. O oh, thou who tried to fly just after birth, are chained like a slave by her downward embrace. Chuck, 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 chuck. I don't know how to do a magpie sound. But it's like something like. No. Okay, I'm, hang on. That's the closest approximation. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let the shame of my song and your body's own pain teach you this. Only reach for you can attain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have learned more about the way of the white blacks. How will you respond? Hmm. Okay, that's air. That's earth. That's water. I think I want to get a secret out of it. You express your deep admiration of its beauty, no noting the subtle, subtle blue shimmers within its dark feathers and the pearl-like shine of its lighter, pri lighter parts. You confess envy of its ability to dance so very gracefully upon the wind and the legendary cleverness of its people. It seems that it is quite prone to flattery. Preening its feathers proudly, it sings. Truly, this hatchling knows beauty as beauty. My people know secrets. Such is our duty. One of your dragkin met death here today. Destroyed by the tailors. So the winds say. And yet in destruction, a secret it keeps. A treasure within its great jaws, there still sleeps. As it wings away, you reflect on the power of understanding others. By appealing to the white black's vain nature, you are able to get something valuable for a very small price. Its words, however, disturb you. What are the tailless? And can they possibly be more powerful than a kin? Perhaps the kin was young, or perhaps the white black was mistaken. Still, you cannot help but feel troubled. Moving on, you allow the hillside to guide you downward. You have been following the path of a swift running river for some time, when you are struck by a powerful scent. Flicking your tongue out, you taste the sacred essence of one of the kin on the breeze. Floating on twin wings of pain and decay. There is another flavor as well. Something strange. Something animal, but not something other. You're, you shudder, your feathers raising upward involuntarily. What could these strange scents mean? 
the kin whose scent you now smell could possibly explain. But you are now hashed, and beyond the cham chamber, all kin are rivals, seldom welcoming the scent of another drag in their territory. Still, there is something familiar in that scent, something which tugs at the corners of your mind. Stealing yourself, you carefully draw closer to its source. Oh, god damn. Destruction. The horrible stillness of her body, empty of spirit. The noble red essence of her great kin, shed not in a true dance of destruction, but trapped, tortured, the confusion, the pain. In the synergy between its scent and yours, you know without doubt, this was the great being who instructed you as the voice. This was one of your creators. Its rhythm is now silenced, its songs forever stilled. Already, tiny spirits of decay infest the vast body, feeding off of it, reducing it to void. Something is clawing at you from within, straining at your heart bone and flooding your mind. Fear and rage and shuddering nausea overtake you one after another, growing and writhing within. You feel yourself instinctively belch fire seed into the back of your throat, only just managing to swallow it again, denying it the chance to explode into a searing flame to consume the things which now sing and dance near the ruins of one who created you. The things, what are they? There is something wrong with them. Something very, very wrong. They seem to have more than one, than one skin, some of them belonging to other animals. The brightness of their body heat is darkened by the cold dead hides they cover themselves with. Oh wait, I have I have infrared vision? Is that what's going on? There's something strange about their oily sense. Something familiar, but alongside that, something completely other. Like no true animal. They clutch strange things in their forepaws, which you cannot identify, though they reek of the blood of trees. But most horrifyingly, they have no tails. They are tailless. You are split inside, the air within you screaming to run away as fast as you can from this place, and the fire within urging you to destroy these no tails. Decide quickly. I think I'm gonna try to sneak in closer and just get that treasure. It is very sad that my parent died, uh, and I would love to get revenge, but I am kind of a newborn baby, so that might not succeed. Let's try sneaking. You flatten your body to the ground and creep forward. This is the empty shell of one of the kin, its rhythm stilled. The great body, constructed over thousands of turnings of the seasons and nourished by the destruction of thousands of lesser beings, lies quiet, destroyed within just a few moments. Before you hashed, you were taught that all things become silent in time, but beholding the corpse of this great being, one of your own creators, that truth seems all the more urgent and unassailable. Mm -hmm. What's this font here? I don't know, I want to grab the treasure and get out of here. Before you... No, wait. 
Something is odd about the way the great kin's mouth is set. Gently prying open its jaws, which are already calling as the void spreads through the dead shell, you discover something odd. One of your creator's incisors is not made of toothstone, but rather some kind of pale crystal. Your tail quivers, and your head crest stands erect as you taste the air around this strange tooth. Something swims inside of your mind, like prey lurking among watery reeds. You decide to swallow the stone for now, and regurgitate it later when you have a found a place to safely examine it further. Ooh. Crystal Fang! One of your creator's teeth was replaced with this mysterious stone. It does not seem to be natural, and you can almost taste an ozone-flavored energy sleeping fitfully within. Perhaps another kin might be able to tell you more about this rare object. Uh, okay, we're getting out of here now. Bye! You flow rapidly through the underbrush, 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 scrambling f over rotting tree corpses and crashing through shrubs until there is no trace of either scent or sound of the no tails. They seem to possess some kind of terrible magic which allows them to cause harm even from far away. Again, this seems wrong beyond all possible definition of the word. It, it, is not all order in the world dependent on the simple fairness of having destroy your enemies with your own body? Hmm. Perhaps the bizarre things are beyond your ability to deal with as a hatchling. You resolve to grow stronger so that you can bring destruction to them and all their misshapen kind. Okay, avoid the no tails at all costs, keeping safely away. Attempt to learn and imitate their strange magic. Okay, the third one is like interesting. Uh, but I think I'm gonna go with the second one. I think. Yeah, okay. You cannot even begin to imagine their way. Everything about the tailless defi- tailless defies understanding. You must survive, and for now, avoiding them completely is wisest. Perhaps one day. Okay, air, earth, water. You feel something small striking your armor. You turn to see what it is and find nothing, but then it happens again. And again, it is not painful, but it is annoying. Eventually, you realize that this must be rain, the sacred water of the sky, which sometimes falls to bless the Great Mother, of which you were told while still in the chamber. Soon, rain is falling everywhere, tumbling and vaulting off of leaves and sliding, sliding merrily down the grass. It makes it hard to smell and taste the air, and protrudes you as it splutters against your armor. You, will f you find shelter in what used to be the den of a family of fur beasts. Their scent lingers only on the edge of your consciousness, and my they must have been gone for many suns or even moons. You dig it slightly deeper and broader, broader with your claws, and then settle in, watching rain's downward dive. Well, we still haven't eaten anything. Uh, so we should get on that, I think. Okay, I think this is a good place to uh, to stop for now. So, thank you guys for watching. And hopefully we'll... I'll continue this series though, I don't know. I have strange moods and... Uh, I'm really bad at committing to things, but we will see. I'm really enjoying this game so far. I absolutely love the writing. Okay, bye!